I actually just like don't understand men and how their brains work sometimes because today I was just minding my own business and this guy comes up to me and he's like, I just wanted to say that you are, you are such a natural beauty. Um, yeah, I think that a woman can take one look at me and be like, that's fake. Um, my jawline cost $10,000. Okay, my lips are clearly done. My hair is two thousand dollars. My lashes are two hundred dollars every two weeks. I don't understand. I'm clear. I, this is how much I can raise my eyebrows. Men are just like you are. Just they don't make them like you these days. Yes, they do with a needle and a scalpel. Cast your mind back to this tweet about Margot Robbie, just about the time when they released the Barbie movie. I don't quite remember the exact timeline, but I think it was around then where this random online faceless keyboard warrior living in his mom's basement took to the internet to tell us all that Margot Robbie is meat. Of course, that got a lot of pushback and people really came for him. But the crazy thing is, I absolutely agree. She is meat, at least by my own beauty standards. But <laughs> that's not what this video is about. This video is about how I am glad I'm meat. And if Margot Robbie is not meat by other people's standards, Oh, well, she's quite unlucky to be considered pretty. Strange, isn't it? Today we're talking about meat girls, like me, and the reason why it's a blessing. Before we get into it though, you're welcome to my army of armed soldiers where we talk about deep truths people tend to miss. To join us, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another episode of a Nigerian Take with Dio. And whilst you're at it, like and share this video. So, hmm. I've been seeing a lot of stuff online lately about how this generation of young women are rejecting natural beauty and how they're all getting procedures done. You know, like there's this trend, especially since the likes of Kylie Jenner really setting the pace for completely restructuring your face and getting rid of all your cuteness and replacing it with... I'm not sure I even do it quite as mean as it looks. <laughs> anyway, the thing with that blank, pretty face, I'll call myself a, a bit of a weirdo, I guess, because things that most people seem to want to gravitate towards, that's just not me. The thing with being made is being made is a blessing. It's indeed a blessing because <laughs> there's so much you get from being made. First off, in terms of your love life, there are so many benefits. And in terms of generally how people treat you, there are so many benefits to being made. You're in the middle. Being mid is in the middle, right? So I think about 50% of people on the planet are probably mid. And then you have like 10% uh, or so, 10 or 20% that are actually really objectively attractive. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but they are actually objectively attractive by many standards. And this particular point, by the way, I find it so interesting how we as humans, you know, when someone says I'm ugly or I'm mid, people always rush to the defense and say, oh, girl, you're beautiful. Whereas actions speak louder than words. That person that has declared themselves ugly or mead or things like that, sometimes it's not necessarily based on low self-confidence. It's actually based on self-awareness. They know very well how the attention from men have been throughout their life. They also know very well how some other girls get so much attention and those girls look to them objectively prettier. And it's a perfectly good explanation that they are, especially since if me as a mid girl, I'm getting attention from maybe one or two guys. A girl who is objectively so beautiful that most people think she's like so gorgeous is getting attention every single day of her life, which I consider as a curse, by the way, but we'll get to that. So the thing is, anytime I say this, people are quick to say, no, you're beautiful. I'm like, oh, please spare me the BS. I know what my life looks like. I know what my relationships look like. I know myself, okay? I see myself in the mirror. I see the people on screen as well. I'm not blind, all right? You don't need to compensate me. I'm not saying it from an emotional standpoint, more of a self-awareness standpoint, because personally, I, I, I might be the most confident person on the planet, so much so that I try to... Uh, I try to regulate myself so I don't become overconfident because I, I tend to come off as intimidating to people sometimes when, you know, I have my shit together. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm assertive. I'm not looking at you slouching down. I, I really don't care what you think about me, you know, but I'm not rude or arrogant or anything like that. But people translate that being put together as being arrogant. But I digress. I digress. 
that's not the point of this. Back to being meat. The first thing is you're not ugly. So that's good because ugly people, there's this thing with people, right? When people see an ugly person, the first impression they get is disgusting, right? They're disgusted by it and they, they want to um, slap that person in the face. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Essentially for ruining their day with their look. Well, that is not the person's fault. The person didn't create themselves. Although sometimes it can be your fault, but I don't want to get too deep into those details. Sometimes it's not your fault. You're just, you know, you just have the face of a beast. <laughs> Naturally, it's also not their fault that they react that way immediately. You have to train yourself to not do that to people when you are completely taken aback by how ugly they are or how really different looking they are. So it takes a level of self-control and discipline to be able to look at somebody that is not attractive and not go, you know, and not start to visibly cringe in front of them. So the thing with being mid is you're not ugly. So people are not going to cringe or treat you badly just because you exist. So that's already a positive, right? All right. <laughs> The other positive is you're not that attractive either. You're just normal. When people see you, they just have a neutral vibe. They're not excited and they're not disappointed either. So if they're not excited and they're not disappointed, it places you somewhere in the middle, which is the perfect place to be if you want somebody to get to know you. As an ugly person, you have to jump a huddle. You have to jump a huddle to get people to want to know you. But as a meat person, while people will not immediately take an interest in you, I'm talking about as a female now, catering to the male gaze. While men will not immediately want to like pay attention to you, you might be ignored a lot because while well, you're just neutral, you're yeah, ignore me. Whilst that's not going to happen, you're still going to get like a few people that would want to like settle. Even if they themselves are meat, by the way, because a lot of men, because of how they take care of their exterior they are quite meat as well so even if they themselves are meat they would you know want to pay attention to you a bit so it's already better than being ugly the other good side is because you're not getting all that attention from so many different people because you're so extremely beautiful it's also a blessing because then you have some more quality to pick from than quantity now, the downside to being so beautiful, objectively beautiful in everyone's eyes is that men tend to see you as a trophy. They don't see you as a human being. They place you on this pedestal and a lot of them just want to say that they conquered the beautiful girl because they want to dominate, right? They have a proclivity to dominate and they want to assert that dominance over something that looks unattainable. So if you're that something, you tend to be treated mostly as a trophy. And when you're a trophy, what tends to happen is most men who come across you won't see the human being, won't see the regular girl who eats shits, pieces <laughs> like the rest of us. What they see is this prize to possess, to hold on their arm, to show their friends, to show their people that they were able to score such a person. You're hardly ever going to get a genuine guy that is really genuinely interested in your heart and really genuinely interested in you for you. On the flip side, when you are meet, because you're not placed on that pedestal, you're just seen as a normie, you're more likely to get the kind of men that are interested, you know, your personality as opposed to people that just want to smash. I have like very beautiful friends. They tend to have really shitty type relationships, mostly because once the guy gets what he wants, once the guy has slept with them, per se, it becomes a thing of, oh, I conquered the trophy girl, time to move on to the next. And some people actually come in with uh, good intentions, right? They actually come in with good intentions, but they do these things unintentionally. They do it subconsciously. They don't even know that that's what they're doing. They think they're genuinely interested in you, but what is actually manifesting is their male ego wanting to get with something that seems unattainable. And then once, once they've had that, they start to realize, oh, okay, I didn't really like this girl's personality anyway, but we've been together for a while and that's it. That's it. So I feel like that must be tough to have to encounter those sorts of people. And again, this is not saying this does not happen across board. I'm sure there are some men whose standards are significantly lower. In fact, there are some men whose standards are literally on the floor, which is why I always preach standards to men on my, <laughs> on my channel. Basically, in the dating sphere, as a meat person, you're way, way more likely to get a person that is interested in you because you're not ugly, which means your partner 
the guy, he's not looking down on you. He's not feeling like he's settled so far down. If you are mid and you have an amazing personality, you are very likely, very likely to find love. Very like I'm just saying, very likely. If you notice, I have Brett Cooper on my cover, as well as Margot Robbie, of course. And I'm using Brett Cooper in this sense because as a white girl, she has a big nose. Just like me, I have a big nose as well. Even though I'm growing into my nose. When I was younger, my nose was a lot more fanimorious. So I'm like growing into it just like Brett Cooper did as well. She grew into it. So I use her because personally, I think she's she's so beautiful. Not because I think she matches the normal um, standards of beauty. I think she she has a look. Because of the size of her nose on the white girl, she instantly is not forgettable. Now, I come across a lot of YouTubers, female YouTubers that do similar stuff to what she's doing, but I don't even remember their face. But with Brett Cooper, her face really does stand out because of that. But standing out doesn't necessarily mean that you are beautiful by most people's perceptions. It just means that you stand out, right? You can stand out and be ugly. <laughs> So I had to use her because I see myself in her quite a little bit because she's, uh, she's, she's charming. She has quite the personality going for her and she has a face that stands out. I wouldn't say I have a face that stands out because as a black person, it's not, it's not weird to see a, ples- a person with a flat nose or wider nose like I have. So I've noticed very early on that I'm the friend that the guy doesn't like right away. I'm the dog. Yeah. The designated ugly fat friend. That's me. And I'm glad I'm the (laughs) dove. Okay, okay. I know I'm neither fat nor ugly. All right. (laughs) But I am the dove in my own circle of friends. I may not be the dove in another group of girls, but I'm certainly the dove in my group of friends. So the thing about that is I'm never approached. Okay, let me even tell you a story. One time I was with one of my friends in school and we're walking together. And this guy came and he pretty much ignored me you know men when they they are not attracted to you you're practically invincible so and that's a fact nobody nobody should even argue that because that's a fact women can still form like platonic type friendships and things like that but a lot of times men tend to ignore that they don't even see the ladies that they are not attracted to which is not necessarily a bad thing but again we're not chatting into the deeper stuff now he walked up to us yeah and he talked to us, well, talked to her, completely ignored me the whole time. Of course, I didn't feel bad because that was like a regular occurrence. It, it, I was practically used to that by then. Like I said, I'm the dove. So that day, I ended up being the one to give him my number because I like to meet people. I like to talk to people, you know, get to know different people from different walks of life, older people, younger people. I just find it interesting. Like, as you already know, I like to people watch, so it's part of my people watching process. <laughs> I gave him my number, she didn't, and then he started to pay attention to me like he was settling for me, like because the pretty girl he wanted did not pay him any attention, it was now time to talk to the mid girl. And I found that funny. You know, it was almost hurtful. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to say that I don't have some negative emotions about it sometimes. Everyone does. But it, it, for me, it doesn't even, it doesn't really last very long, you know. I almost felt bad, but I understood why that was because it actually made me filter him out and question his character because it's like, okay, so you're jumping from one friend who rejected you now to the next who you feel like because she's mid, she might be more available or willing to honor your advances. And that's what tends to happen a lot with made people. And you might find love through there. Their standard is already not that high for you. And then when you have such an amazing personality or maybe you're smart, they tend to get blown away and think, oh, this girl that I didn't think so much of. Basically, you have a chance to grow in the person's eyes rather than a chance to decline, which is a good thing. Back to the story. I actually used that as a character filter. Once I had filtered that part of him, I was like, "Mm, I wasn't really into it because, well, if you're going to pick me a second, I might be me, but I'm definitely not second to anybody. So it it rubbed me off the wrong way. Uh, He would text me years later trying to impress me with details I didn't ask for. And I wondered about it. Because it it was almost as though I treated myself with such self-respect, he kept thinking about it. This is me tooting my own horn, by the way. I'm not saying that's what actually happened, but I tend to do that. So forgive me if I get a bit arrogant on the mic. I'm just very analytical and I like to try and pick out 
those little details about why people do what. And unfortunately, that tends to sound like I'm tooting my own horn sometimes. So I have to apologize for that. Now, while there are benefits to being mid and there are downsides as well, which is the part where people want to sort of settle for you sometimes, you can always use it to your advantage. Whereas a girl that is very pretty is going to find it very difficult to navigate a love life where it's not about being treated like a trophy to be discarded after you've been had. So that is the reason being mid is absolutely a blessing. And if you're a mid girl, I don't think you should try to change yourself. I don't think you should be getting all these crazy procedures to try to look like Kylie Jenner. Newsflash, Kylie Jenner looks like an alien. She doesn't look. In my opinion, people that get those surgeries, they don't look good. They look angry. I don't know why and how that has become trendy and something to want. But mm, humans are weird. Humans are weird. That's all I can say. So this is the Mid Girls Club. I'm glad to be mid. And I'm not shitting on anyone that's pretty. I absolutely think you find a, you should find a way to navigate your own life. You know, I just feel like you've been dealt a bad hand that is masking as a good hand. That's what I feel about being extremely pretty. And, you know, people think you have all this pretty privilege. And with pretty privilege comes pretty hatred. All right. So I'm glad I'm mid. And you should be too, if you're a mid girl watching this. Use your midness to your advantage. Being a normie leads to a much, much happier life. As you now come to see with a lot of pretty girls in Hollywood and pretty girls who have done procedures and all, ending up pretty miserable and depressed. So if you put all your self-worth and everything in that, oh, you're sure to have a life where you struggle with low self-esteem. My name is Deo. Thanks for watching. So guys, if you agree, you disagree with what I have to say, you can leave a comment below. After all, it's just one woman's analysis. I'll see you on the next one. Odabu.